ahead and keep it as short as possible. Number one, went through a really big breakup and I moved my ass to Joshua Tree. I bought five acres and on this five acres, there was like seven structures and we focused on demoing a ton. Now we're renovating the trailer to be the guest house that I then live in. Now, even though the episode is encompassing a ton, it's really centered around helping beginner drywaller homeowner people like myself to watch a video and be like, okay, it's not so scary, it's hard, but it's not so scary and it's doable. So it is with great pleasure, it is with my blood, sweat and tears that I present to you so dramatically the final episode of Renovation Station to this trailer a year in the making. Oh, let's dive in. There are a ton of videos on this playlist, but let me just take you back really quick with how this trailer originally looked. Now, we had to demo all of that out, we had to reframe, and then we moved on to insulating, which you should not be able to see that pink, but because I'm like shredding these sheets and putting them up, um, that is why they look like that, but that's not what they should be looking like. Anywho, we also ran the electrical, and what I needed to do before my friends came out was prep as much of the electrical as I possibly could to just install the lights and switches where they were gonna go. Please don't explode on me. Nothing's wired into it. Okay. One of these should be hot. Oh, shot. Okay, so this is on. Off. Oh. Okay. Shut up. Oh, Mr. Bragg, I'm so sorry. We started to do the drywall. This is round one, uh, but then we stopped because when my friends came out, we had to basically take the whole thing down and start again, which wasn't bad. It was just a mistake on my behalf. Love it! So this dynamic duo, who you've never seen Woodbrain's husband, Mr. Eric, they're dominating the electrical. I'm sitting by this misting fan, and then <laughs> this one. Oh, sh this day was a big day for me because it was the first time my friends have been out actually in a really long time. So the progress that I've made with you guys via the vlogs are kind of the moments I work up to to impress my friends if I'm being honest. Like, hey, look at all the work that I've done even though I'm asking you for help right now. Like, see what I did, but please help me. <laughs> What's happening? We got lights! Uh, I wanna see them! That's the kitchen. What the heck? What? I can't see him, but I'm, I can see the proud on your face. What the actual heck, dude? So forever and ever I owe Eric and Lindsay my life. You know, that is what it is. You're stuck with us. I know. Mr. Eric is honestly Mr. Electrical. He completely dominated the electrical, taped off the wires, let me know where the main line was. He walked me through how to do the bedroom recess lights because I needed to order more, and I actually learned that way way better. Woo! Let's see a little dim action. Oh, saucy. Dude. Oh, a little fire. Uh oh, this one's not coming on. Oh, this one right here? Oh, it might be that ballast. Hold on. Yeah. Boom, baby, boom, boom. Wow. wow. You can and really like. Blinded by, by the, the light. light. <laughs> All the music. All right, we're gonna be installing these recessed lights that Miss Woodbrain and Mr. Woodbrain installed on this side of the trailer. And I sat and learned while remaining in the present with them, so I don't think I showed too much for you. We're gonna go into lengthy detail right about now. The lighting that I'm gonna be using, I've been using on a couple different DIYs. This is just super easy plug and play, essentially, instead of those canned lightings. And they're a lot sleeker and slimmer and DIY friendly, in my opinion. So this is the box that holds all the power, and then you connect it to the recess light that looks like that, that just pops into the drywall. So I definitely wanted to make sure I got the lights that you can choose the different kilowatts on, so I can kind of pick between 3,000, I think the next one is four, and then five. I have been so far liking the 3000 so that's what we're making sure all of them are switched to there are going to be four recess lights in here that might seem like a lot to some people but your girl is a little bit of afraid of the darky dark out here in the desert that is super ridiculously dark anyways i digress also they're going to be on a dimmer so what i'm doing here is just getting the wires prepped for connection into the box that is going to supply the power that we are going to plug the little cute pop in place recess light into oh what do you do for a living? Screw sh together. So how are we not screwing together right now? 
some of the recess lights did give me some trouble, but I just worked through it the best I could and it ended up not being that hard. I connected all the light colored wires, so the black to black, the neutral to neutral, which is white, and then the green, which is ground to ground. I moved on to framing out this back arch because I just think it'd be such a cool moment to walk in and be like, whoa, is it rounded on this side? Like you just wouldn't expect it. So it took a couple extra two by fours. So fun fact, it takes a day to prep, if not more, prep for drywall, at least for me right now. So I went through and I just made sure all the electrical was nice and hooked up and tucked back. I still need to fix over here, but I need to figure out like a DIY electrical solution to case this nice and safely. This is all wired correctly. However, obviously it needs a home of a metal casing or some protection of some sort. So I'm gonna go take my cousin to the airport, stop at Home Depot on the way back, get all the things that I noticed like I needed even like electrical plates to make sure that this is protected before I could even really start to drywall. Gabby and I framed out the arch that I will drywall so there will be a nice arch right here when you're in the bedroom which I'm very excited about and then I just started noticing that the outlets aren't pulled out to the proper spacing for the drywall and they're also not at the right height so I needed to correct that. What else did I do you say? I marked where the studs are on the floor so that way when I throw a piece of drywall up I don't forget and I'm like oh my god where are the studs? I also had Allie start to screw the exterior of the trailer to the new framing that we did to try to get it as flush as possible. Believe it or not, most of my day was fussing with this box in particular. I seriously almost got in a fist fight with it. Oh, I hate this stupid electrical box! And then what else did I do? I just cleaned up, marked the studs, and recognized that I probably have at least just a morning of prep until we can fully dive into insulating and drywalling. I also took the opportunity to frame out this window that Allie cut when she first started working for me. So much better. We have a drywall up everywhere for the recess lighting and you can't see but that is framed out and also also let's move forward if you guys notice anything the posts are gone the wooden post the two-story structure it is absolutely gone so now you have the view in its completion which makes me really happy we just need to clean up over there and get rid of what's dead. And then over here where you can't really see it because it's nice crease, so it will be beautiful. There will be a hammock and pillow fort because there's a jacuzzi dug down in there. Let's chit chat real quick. Okay, so when I first started doing this drywall job, this is this really was the plan. It was to install the drywall, tape and mud the joints, and then hire someone to do the skim coat because I just figured I don't mind doing the heavy lifting and the installing, but what I don't like is the tedious work. So I was more than happy to throw this drywall up. Allie was more than happy to help me. We used this Milwaukee recess lighting tool. We measured and made sure they were marked where the balances were. Ugh, I hate drywall. And it was all fine and dandy. Okay, oh my God, it's not straight. It is not perfect by any means. And I need to screw it before it falls. And obviously, I'm not hitting every stud perfectly. Screws are going into empty spaces. I have to take them out and putty the holes. But you know what? The more I did it, the more confident I felt, just like with anything else. Practice makes progress. Oh, oh my God. It's my goal for the day. I'm so excited. I kind of put drywall on pause in a couple of areas that the electrical was kind of freaking me out until Lindsay came back out with Mr. Eric and they just double checked everything for me. I started to install the last pieces. I am not about to redo all this drywall so you can fist fight me if you'd like to, but you don't want... <laughs> You don't want this. Just take it from me that I've drywalled everything else properly. I just noticed this one corner that these four corners are meeting and you want to stagger them how I did the ceiling. So that's fun. The reason I framed that arch portion out with such small sections is because I'm gonna have to use joint compound to then create the arch that will like sand down to be nice and smooth. But obviously right now it's kind of like straight, 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 straight. We're gonna fake it till we make it, you guys. I added some round corners to the two corners that you see in this place before I moved forward with taping all of the joints, covering the screw holes that I missed and spending, oh my God, like three days doing it. After the drywall was fully installed, that is when I went in with some joint compound that doesn't have a dry time, it's just the red dot one. And you put that into where the drywall is meeting and you lay yourself some paper tape right over it on the seam and 
just use a straight edge to make it as smooth as possible. I repeat, you're going to do that everywhere. You're gonna let that dry, go in, sand that joint that you just did down as smooth as you can where you need to, and add another layer on top of that to protect the tape before you can move forward to skim coating. When all of the seams were dry, I went in with a straight edge where I saw there was lift or a little bit of like speckling and just started to remove the excess before I came in. And since I knew there was a lot of feathering that needed to be done, I took a really long level that I own and just ran it along the wall and marked where there was some extreme divots before before I started to add on the skim coat finish. That deep breath that I feel like, oh my God, when does the drywalling end? <laughs> I continued working on the seams by just revisiting it and sanding it down, adding joint compound where there needed to be to make sure that all the pieces look smooth before doing the skim coat. I then took the opportunity to chalk line out what I was thinking for the kitchen. Now there's a bunch of materials going into this tiny kitchen and I just didn't wanna work more than I was about to because I needed to skim coat this 40 foot beast. So cool. <laughs> Having Allie has been such a blessing because even just right there in the moment that I didn't stop to oodle, she did it for me. She was like, oh my God, I cannot believe there's tile. I can like physically see a kitchen coming to real life. And it was just a chalk line and it made me so happy. You can order a ton of fancy tools to do this skim coating process. Mike from Modern Builds, I believe is about to drop an episode doing it completely different than what I'm doing here skim coat wise. But how I like to do it is take a five gallon bucket of the joint compound mixture, wetting it down and mixing it up to be like a pancake batter consistent and then using a roller and rolling that on the wall in sections that you can handle. I decided to pick up a hawk, which is in my right hand and my left hand has my 10 inch straight blade that I'm just going in and smoothing out the joint compound that is wet on the walls that we just rolled on to be as smooth as possible. I repeated that three damn times and you bet your ass I'm gonna oodle the hell away right now. You have walls, like, I'm just trying a little bit, you know, because um, I can't remember the last time I was this sore, um, but I just continued on with the ceiling because you know what? I just focused on the walls and looked up at the ceiling was like, I'm gonna wait for Allie to come back to work and I'm gonna ask her for her help. So we just dominated the ceiling like nobody's business. We topped that ceiling with a green dot finish. I did not use a green dot finish on the walls. Please don't come at me. I know that you're supposed to, but ugh. You can tell how much I hated sanding because I recorded maybe two seconds of it, but it was seven hours straight of just making sure that this place was sanded down smooth or built back up where it wasn't leveled up until Josh came and he started helping me with the Mr. Cool install for my two mini splits that are gonna be in here, which is insanely exciting. When I was happy with my less than $500 skim coat job that I got quoted for $4,500 on, I moved forward with adding primer to this drywall. It is a Kills drywall primer paint and I just slapped that over everything. And I can't even believe now, it's officially, sorry, I'm yelling. We're gonna be moving on to floors and makeovers. What the heck? Man, I'm just sitting here at sunset, oodling away, playing set with my babies. <laughs> but what in the world? Oh my goodness to a normal passing by human on youtube that doesn't follow my journey and has skipped out of this video because it might not necessarily be the most tutorial driven let me tell you if you put your mind to something and you want to renovate it and you have no idea how you can because oh my god walls high electrical high windows high 20 foot opening sliding doors that are just ready for me to just completely make over and install furniture and actually live and enjoy this oh I wanted to sit down and do a couple of takeaways for you guys of this project since it was so labor intensive. For me, number one, when I got quoted $4,500 to just put the putty onto the walls to make it smooth, given where I live, because I live so far out, my quote is automatically a little bit higher. Also, nobody is really available in the desert that I was searching for. So that made the quote $4,500. That is not typical. Like literally back in LA, that is not the price. I mean, that would include like installing the drywall, taping and mudding. So based off of that, because 
this was a $4,500 job, here are my takeaways. Number one, next time I install the drywall, I wanna make sure my frame is completely level so there's no crazy feathering to make the walls level. Number two would be just talk to a couple of friends because even though you don't know how to do it, it's really easy to teach somebody and although it might not be perfect, it's definitely worth having the extra arms because mine are legitimately about to fall off. Number three would be I'm actually really excited that I went ahead and did it because all the quotes that I did get told me they couldn't do it for another month and you guys this has been in the works for a year I could not wait another 30 days for this thing to have walls it took me seven to do it so I saved you know 23 days of time and that's 23 days of designing and like going into detail work instead of just like twiddling my thumbs even more I wanted to sit down over here too before I headed out to just let you know the reason why I didn't skim coat in here and that is because I'm doing a Tadillac plaster that is a waterproof plaster finish to the bottom half and then the top half a really special paint and tile which will be all part of the tiny kitchen episode which I'm very excited for so that's my story and I'm sticking to it okay I'll see you very soon for another DIY love you guys